buckets, and if you've been watching the news, there's a desperate need for anything to help with cleaning efforts after floods. So if you're able or interested, drop off one of those buckets, or at least bring in part of what we need. The ingredient sheets are downstairs on the table near all of the beautiful Home Depot buckets with a nice, subtle shade of orange. Okay, that's sarcasm. They're pretty, they're pretty obvious. But if you're interested or want to have a hands-on way of helping someone, that's a great way to do it. The witness team in between services has been selling Christmas ornaments. So if you um, are come here normally at 11 o'clock, get here a few minutes early. And uh, if you want to see some great Christmas ornaments as well as other items from Wendell August Ford as a fundraiser for our Coke Ministries here at the church. Next up, we have our announcement for our Tell Someone growth groups, where this fall we'll be connecting worship on Sunday morning with our growth group ministries. We have an advertisement here right now, professionally done, well, maybe not professionally, but we did what we could. This is Captain Brian Keller, one of aboard Flight 728 and route to eternity. The weather's sunny and a perfect 72 degrees. Debbie will be your flight attendant. We hope that you enjoy the flight. Shh. Bringing the best book. It's called Tell Someone. Thank you. The talk right now. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. John, any water or peanuts? I'd love some water. Okay. Mark, do you think that's where you're No, I'm good. What are you reading? You like it. Oh, this is an awesome book. It's called Creed. But I'd also like to talk about where I'm reading this book, and I'm reading it in my church in my birth room. And it's a bunch of ladies, and we get together, and we help each other, we support each other, and it's just a great place to learn and grow up with. Thank you. I've been reading, too. I've seen the world behind me. I am really involved in this chapter. It's called Transformed by Truth, um, is the chapter. But the book is What on Earth Am I Here For? I've heard of that. Have you? Yes. It's, I mean, it's really helping you with spiritual maturity and um, answers questions about a purpose-driven life. So um, I would highly recommend it. Thank you for your time. Sure. Ah, technical difficulties. We cut out halfway through. So you missed the rest there where Denise as well as Kristen get to share, but you may get a sense of one, the immaculate cinematography done, <laughs> let alone the video editing. In other words, I did it. Shockingly, it didn't turn out perfectly. But if you'd like to see the full video, it is on our YouTube page and will be posted, the link will be posted soon to the Facebook page if you'd like to see the full video. We'll have our minute or so video ready for next Sunday morning. The real point is this. Growth groups, they meet together, they support each other, we learn together, we pray together, we grow together, and at least in the Tuesday night group, they eat immaculately. I could have gone. It looked like one of those spreads at a wedding. There were eight women there Tuesday night for the meeting, and there was enough for 80. It was incredible. So I help with the amounts of it. They're welcome. But if you're interested, it's a great time. It is not too late to join. Um, we'll just be reading through, tell someone, and more importantly, talking about it with each other. Moving on, our kids' Sunday school classes are, start, are going on for our youngest, as well as third through seventh graders. We have two different classes. That occurs at 10, 10 Sunday mornings, right down the hallway here. We also still have Larry Rogers, um, current events class as well downstairs off the Fellowship Hall. Meanwhile, tonight, Christmas play program for our kids practice will occur at 6 p.m. And our cantata practice for the upcoming Christmas cantata is Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. That follows praise team practice and is just before the choir's practice. So if you're interested, come on out Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Here for the cantata, 6 p.m. for the kids program. It's not too late to get involved. At this time, we'd love to welcome, oh, first, oh, oh, I'm jumping the gun just a little bit here. Um, if you remember, Megan and Jeremy O'Hara joined the church the same Sunday that Megan Reed joined um, here. Megan and Jeremy, welcome Bryce, what is Bryce's middle name? There it is, Bryce Michael O'Hara on September 7th. So, congratulations to the O'Hara's. Join on, I think it was September 2nd, have a baby on the 7th. Hopefully that doesn't happen for everybody else when they join. <laughs> Just joking. We'll move on from my bad humor. Thanks be to God. So, my friends, at this point, we'd love to introduce 
Travis and Lydia and Meshach and Salas, except where'd Salas go? Salas ran away. Great parenting. <laughs> Our mission, missionaries with the navigators and from Kenya. UMC. Thank you for your prayers and support for our work in Kenya for these many years. And we look forward um, with joy to hearing um, what God is doing through this congregation, through this current series about telling someone. The idea of um, the gospel being next door to everywhere. You know, there's this, this myth, this mythology that uh, missionaries are somehow different. Um, people put us on a pedestal, which um, I find unhelpful in many ways. And that and people have this idea that God somehow works differently and in extra special ways in Africa than he does in the US. That's not true. Not true at all. And one of our prayers is that gospel the gospel will be next door to everywhere. So your neighbor is not my neighbor. And my neighbor is not your neighbor. We each have unique relationships and opportunities and ways that God can work in and through us for his kingdom to advance. It is so good to be back here, you guys. Yay! Yay! We are grateful for this church family. Yeah. So, um, my father-in-law teases us that we wear matching clothes like the Van Trapp family singers of the Sound of Music movie. But actually, in Kenya, it's a kind of a common way to celebrate a special occasion because tailors are very affordable. Just buy a big piece of fabric and you have matching clothes made for your whole family for some special occasion. So this trip is certainly a special occasion for us. So our connection to this church family um, starts when I was in college. Beth Harper then, whose married name is husband now, um, the daughter of Jim and Jeannie Harper, became one of my best friends in the world when we were in college together at Wheaton College studying to be teachers. And she kept telling me stories about Western Pennsylvania. And she said, oh, Lydia, I come from good people. Oh, you've got to meet my people. And um, so when we were just going out to Africa the first time, you guys were one of the first churches to support us, and you have ever since these 15 years. We can also testify that Western PA hospitality includes fantastic food, just amazing food. We are so grateful for the warmth of the hospitality here. And um, connecting that back to this series about evangelism, um, food and evangelism are not disconnected, but often closely connected. Um, Beth's husband, Josh, and their family name is Husband, which my sons found hilarious when they heard the first time her husband is named Husband. Um, anyway, Beth's husband, Josh, Husband, um, his motto is what he learned from his dad. Barbecue first. <laughs> And literally, that's what they do, that as a family to be intentional about being friendly with unsaved neighbors, with the people on the baseball team, with the people around them, we all, have, we all get the chance to barbecue first, to share that amazing hospitality and food. And then as we know someone and have a real friendship with them, then comes the opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus, which is life or death for people, whether they are living in Kenya or they're living in Mercer. Thank you so much. Travis, Lydia, Meshach, and we'll throw Silas in there too. Thank you so much. Friends, let's greet one another and the Clint Force with the love of Christ. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
Oh 
And my friends, what do you believe? You can find the Apostles Creed on page 881. But what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty. Oh, except we're doing the other one, aren't we? Good morning. I'm on routine. Isn't that a bad thing to slide into? Well, as you can tell, I'm totally on the ball here. This is um, from taken from page 889 in the hymnal, pointing back to verses from First, I'm, yeah, First Timothy. You ready for me now? Y'all all made a mistake. I'm all good, right? Right. All right. You are forgiven. <laughs> That's what matters, friends. There is one God, and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. And my friends, please be seated. I'm supposed to do that now, right? Just chapter. Affirmation 889, taken from 1 Timothy chapter 2, 5 and 6, verse 1, or chapter 115 and 316. At this time, it's time for our children's message, and so if our youngest folks would like to come forward, that'd be a great thing. Come on out, Meshach. Long time no see. Morning, Evan. Okay. Morning again, Ben. Morning again, Rachel. Morning, Cameron. Morning again, Lucas. All right, I have something from the Bible for you. You guys ready? All right, Meshach. Shh. Secret just between the two of us, okay? All right. He knows what happens. Poor guy's been here for this, this is his second service today, so impressive. So, taken from first, or I'm sorry, first Corinthians. Good morning. Taken from Luke 15. Or, Jesus said, suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? So, time out. Eyes here. I've lost some coins. I need help finding them. They are. It's okay. It's all right, Meshach, because I need your eyes here. They are all over. They're from the, the table here, and they're from the piano, and over towards the door, somewhere in this neck of the woods. I need help. Now, here's the deal. Everybody gets a coin. If you don't find one, we'll make sure you share one, So which means if you have a ton of coins, I need you to share, okay? There should be plenty for everybody, but I need your help to help me find my missing coins. Ready? On your mark? Get set. Look at how you guys are cheating already. Look at that. You'd almost think I said go. I said go. <laughs> Wherever you can find them. There are a lot of silver coins and there are a couple gold coins. Good job, Rachel. Holy cow, Cameron, you're jingling all over the place there. <laughs> Oh, nice job, Evan. Everybody just walked right by those. It's nice. Yep, there aren't any back there, Cameron. Careful back there. That's a little tricky. I'm shocked I don't trip on anything whenever I'm back there for communion. There's nothing back there, Cameron. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, there are none over there. You probably have them all. All right, grab a seat. Everybody have a coin? You have one? Seriously? Just one. How about you, Evan? 3, 4, 77, something like that. Lucas, look out. That's Lucas. That's all Lucas. That's all Lucas. Good stuff. Everybody's got one? Good job. Great job. Now, isn't that really cool whenever you find something that you lost? Yep, yeah, here we go. Here's what the Bible says next. Or in verse 9. And when she finds it, in other words, the coin she lost. Gentlemen, ladies, when she finds that coin, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost coin. She's excited. She's almost jumping up and down. She can't wait to celebrate with everybody. So let us pretend or act like we are completely overjoyed that we're excited that we found all these coins. You guys excited you found my coins? All right, all right. Grown-ups, watch this. On three, you ready? On three. Let me, let me see. Where did my... Oh, yeah. Here's my extra bag of coins. Yeah, here we go. Because, you know, if you're really excited, I have a couple extras here. I may be able to give them away. 
So I'm just going to be an impartial judge, partially partiating your partiality. So if you partially do this partially, you may not get a coin, but otherwise, you know, he could be a partial coin, if he give you a whole coin, so I'll give you a whole coin if you like. <laughs> Ready? On three. What did I just mean? Celebrate. You may get a coin. Okay? On three. Ready? Not for you! Oh. On three. One, two, three. <laughs> You're supposed to celebrate. You gotta celebrate. That's what I'm judging. Ready? On three. Seriously, I have enough for all of you. Alright. On three. Can you guys celebrate? One, two, three, go. There we go. Well done. Cameron, awesome job. Meshack, awesome job. You just jumped up and down with extreme vim and vigor. There we go, Rachel. All right, thank you so much, guys. Give away those, everybody else. We're a little refrain, but she, remember, so she lost her coins. When she found it, she celebrated verse 10. This is the kicker. In verse 10, Jesus said this, in the same way I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Or for our words, God and the angels in heaven celebrate when somebody who didn't know Jesus becomes a Christian. Celebrates. It's just sort of like, well, it's about time. They celebrate. So, I don't know if it's a party. I don't know if there are streamers going off in heaven. I don't know if they've got healing balloons or those dancing little fan dudes, you know, outside of car dealerships. Yeah. Who knows? Fireworks. I don't know what happens in heaven, but they celebrate. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that you celebrate when somebody gets, comes to know Jesus. Thank you that you celebrate it when each of us who knows Jesus said yes to Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So here's some things. I want to bring some stuff that I celebrate when I find it. So this morning I've got here Snickers bars, both the peanut butter and almonds. Here I've got Snickers bars, both the um, regular and as well as the crispy ones, because it's sort of like Snickers. And I've got leftover apples from last week. <laughs> They've been in the refrigerator. And then I left them out there for the fruit flies. I'm joking. They've been in the refrigerator for all week. So, apples are here. Candy's there. On your mark, get set. Go. You would think I said go. There we go. Wow. Frogger town. You're welcome, Cameron. Candy, if you guys want it. But if you want to leave Snickers behind, I'm so sorry you did. Friends, what do you want to thank God for this morning? What would you like to praise God for who God is? What do we need to be praying for? Marianne. Oh, I missed it. I'm sorry. Oh, Marianne. I'm sorry. Okay. No, I'll still take it. For Finley. So we've been praying for Finley in the midst of treatments and whatnot. Thanks, Mary Ann. Mary Anna. I have a special joy this morning. Uh, Jean's uh, daughter, Robin, and her husband, Bruce, are here from just outside of New York City. And they are both captains in the Salvation Army. And I think we should give them... families that are spelled that out properly. Yeah, 
in the midst of them losing their 23-year-old daughter. And then also praising God for what we've seen God work. Thanks to these. Friends, is there anything else you want to thank God for? Praise God for who God is. Anything we need to be praying for. Bob. I guess I'll volunteer the help for the people who've been rained on, flooded out. There's a lot of people needing assistance. Amen to that. And whenever it passes through the news and it's over with, it's not over with for those who live there. Puerto Rico, it sounds like it's still in terrible straits. Can't imagine what's going on with the, uh, the, after the aftermath of the fires in California, let alone the flooding that occurred in the Carolinas and whatnot. And that's just what we hear about here because the United States were pretty self aware and self centered. So thanks, Bob. I also ask you to be praying for uh, my friend from seminary. His name is Tim Becker. Tim's passed away. He's 10 years younger than I am, more or less. So 35 year old with some sort of health issue I still don't understand. Uh, but Tim passed away, left behind his wife, Caroline, and three kids. Um, I believe he was in um, working towards becoming a seminary professor if he wasn't one already. Um, but Tim was on that track either way to be praying for the Becker family. And then to also be praying for Tina's mom, Carol. And the beautiful thing is Tina's sister, Yvonne, has been able to be up here this weekend. Um, <laughs> and left the two seven-year-olds at home with dad for the weekend. Oh. I hear there was vomit this morning. I don't know. Oh. And it was in somebody's bed. I'm just, oh. I'm just so thankful they're in Florida. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, shame on me. Uh, but I hear everybody volunteered to find a vomit at our place. So. <laughs> Either way. So the gift is, though, in the midst of what we think are Carol's last days here on Earth, that she's um, if wants able to be here. And it sounds like most of the family will be able to be with Carol today. So that's a beautiful thing. But, um, yeah. Friends, is there anything else we have to praise God for? Thank God for who God is. Anything we need to be praying for? Kathy? Uh, I would ask for continued prayer for my cousin um, weeks ago. We prayed for her for open heart surgery. She had so many complications, but she is now in rehabilitation. She's off of uh, the ventilator. you for rejoicing in heaven that you love us that much we celebrate when someone comes home from college when the kids who have been away for almost a year we celebrate the cling force the amount of places they are able to go and the celebrations occur because they are here we see that but we lose track of the fact that there's celebration in heaven over a lost person who's found but what a joy it is that you love us that much and when we say yes to jesus you celebrate you have for us. Love that seems to be out of this world. Love that seems to be outside of our minds. Love that for some of us seems to be unreal or not at all real. And yet, that's your love for us. When one sheep, when one coin, you celebrated when they were found. We give you thanks for that incredible love that you have for us. We don't deserve it, but we praise you and thank you that you'd be willing to celebrate and so, Father, we pray that you open up our eyes to those around us. Help us to see those who don't know your Son. We're praying for you to give us the words to say, but even more importantly, the patience and the ear to hear and the right way to love them. Not just love them with their hearts, but love them in action. Do not treat people as though they're some sort of object or a thing to be saved, but instead, Father, show us the true value and worth of each person that's around us. Because you celebrate. So, Father, 
the midst of that love that you've shown us, in the midst of celebrating, we come before you and ask for you to move and work. We're asking, Father, for you to be with the Becker family and bring about healing. In the midst of Tim leaving behind three kids and his wife, Caroline, we ask you to be with my mother-in-law, Carol, and pray for healing for her. Here on earth, for eternal healing, we pray, Father, for healing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We ask God to be with Finley in the midst of this recovery, let alone treatments. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we ask you to be with the Grossman and Rhoda Boyer families. We're asking for your presence and your healing touch. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We're asking Father that you be with those who have been flooded and those who come in for recovery, for those who have been affected by the wildfire, fires, wildfires, and so many other natural disasters that bring to mind the terrors that can occur in the typhoons that occur in the in, in Asia, we're asking, Father, for you to protect and provide. It's in Jesus' name to put me pray. We live before you, baby, in the midst of her incredibly slow, strenuous recovery from open heart surgery. We're praying for breathing and speaking through the trachea, let alone even more so, Father, for muscle retention and growth after having three and a half or so long. We're praying, Father, for your movement. It's in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for we've seen your hand at work. And we thank you, Father, for the gifts, the clinks to be here, for Robin and Bruce to be here, for the, the blessings you put upon our life today, Father. We give you thanks and praise, right? You show up into our lives that you move and work. And that when we said yes to Jesus, you celebrated. Talk about the love you have for us. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Friends, we're reading this morning come from Romans chapter 1, as well as Luke chapter 15. Good morning, baby. Romans, of course, was written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome. The, and Luke chapter 15 is called the lost chapter, which will make sense here quite soon. Good morning. Good morning. Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Luke 15, 1 through 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me! I have found my lost sheep. I will tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me! I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, let's stand together. If you're so choose to it, be in her
Amen. My friends, please be seated. Excitement at a lost. Jesus tells the stories of lost coins and lost sheep and the excitement at a lost. Um, the excitement that a lost has been found. Like God reacts with incredible excitement that the heavenly choirs of angels rejoice when one person who did not know Jesus comes to know Jesus. That excitement, rejoicing occurs. We may lose sight of that because rejoicing for some of us is just for kids. Not for God. Heaven breaks forth in joy when someone says yes to Jesus Christ. And the incredible, wonderful, terrifying thing is this. God chooses on the whole to use you and to use me. So the lost can be found. There's incredible heavenly rejoicing when a lost is found. There's incredible joy and excitement when a lost has been found. Although at times we may not think someone's lost. As the story goes, there's an old geezer who was a retired farmer, but he was sick and tired of just sitting around the farm. So he decided one day that he would open up his own medicine, pharmaceutical-like clinic. And he called himself Dr. Geezer, and he was there to wait upon people to come. And the offer was this. I'll charge the amount to fix your maladies, but if I can't heal you, I'll give you $1,000. Well, young Dr. Jones, who just opened up shop in town, was excited. It's a little tight, need a little help of keeping the shop open. So he thought, I'll go get that old farmer's money. A thousand dollars would be great. So he went to go see Dr. Geezer, and, Miss, and Dr. Jones went in to see Dr. Geezer and said, Hey, Dr. Geezer, I've lost all the taste in my mouth. Can you fix me? And Dr. Geezer looked at his assistant and said, Go get me box number 22. And so I came box number 22. He poured out the... The liquid in box 22 handed it to um, Dr. Young, and Dr. Young drank it and said, oh, it's terrible, it's gasoline. And Dr. Geezer said, you have your taste back. That'll be $500. Dr. Young was not happy. So he left, and after stewing for a bit, he decided he'd go back to the doctor's office and see if he could get his money back and try to get a 500 extra, not for a full thousand. And so he went in to see Dr. Geezer and said, Dr. Geezer, my eyesight is terrible. I'm sorry, whoop, jumping the gun here a little bit. He says, this will make more sense now. He said, Dr. Geezer, my memory is terrible. I can't remember anything. Really? Said Dr. Geezer. Yes, said Dr. Young. So Dr. Geezer looked at his assistant and said, go get me box number 22. And Dr. Young quickly said, box 22, that's gasoline. Dr. Geezer said, your memory's back, you've been cured. $500. Dr. Young is not happy at all at this point. Fuming, angry, disappointed, outraged. He schemes and he plans and then come and finally comes back. And he says, Dr. Geezer, my eyesight is terrible. I need your help. Dr. Geezer looked at Dr. Young and said, there's really not much I can do for you, Dr. Young. Looks like I owe you. And so he reached into his wallet and pulled out a $10 bill. Mm -hmm. Dr. Young said, $10? Your advertising says $1,000. And Dr. Geezer said, wonderful, your eyesight's back. That'll be $500. <laughs> we may claim that we have something lost, but there's a whole thing about losing our eyesight or losing our mind or losing our taste. It's a whole nother thing when we talk about people. It's a whole nother thing. That's the beautiful aspect of what we see in Luke chapter 15, where there's this celebration when the lost are found. Now for me, if I have something lost, I don't like to admit to it. If anything, I try to keep it secret, which doesn't work well at home because my wife suddenly turns into Sherlock Holmes. Honey, aren't you going to leave yet? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be there in a second, dear. What's wrong? Well, it's my keys, or it's my cell phone, or it's my wallet. I have left them here, and normally I try to pass the buck, and it's normally because I moved something, and it's gone from where I thought it would be. So there's this weird thing, for at least for me, where there's this shame if I lose something in my own head. Not here at all, and we read in Luke 15. There is no shame they don't demonstrate. Sheep are missing, they're not filled with shame, the shepherd drops everything to go find the sheep. Think about it. The shepherd leaves folks, all 99 sheep, out in the open country 
Reliance and Tigers and Bears, oh my, could come and take the sheep away. Kill them, or robbers could steal them, or whatever it might be. Leaves them all, and goes to get the one. If that was our shepherd here at this church, you know what I'd probably have to do? Have file an incident report, or fire the person. You left 99 kids by themselves to go find one. Yet that's what the shepherd did. The one is that important. That's how God looks at the one. Often whenever the sheep is lost in that time period, it's one that was a straggler, one that was an outcast, one that didn't keep up with everybody else, one that didn't have any other units to work with with the sheep and whatnot. In other words, think about people. Those who are friendless, those who don't look so good, those who we would call outsiders, or the folks that we saw them walking through Mercer would get on the other sidewalk. And Jesus talks about the shepherd as if the shepherd is just like God the Father goes and finds the one. Not only that, there is no shame here with finding the one that's lost. Instead, there's excitement and joy. If a friend of mine who's a shepherd came in and said, celebrate with me, I found my lost sheep, my response would be, if I own sheep, I never let you watch them. I don't want to hear that stuff. There's no shame. It's rejoicing. All the worries and the fears are gone. Just like the freedom that kids can have, the rejoicing occurs because the one was, that was lost is found. 99% were sure, sure and safe. Those are great numbers for farmers. Now with God. Same thing with the lost coin. Just like we have with the kids running around up here to find my lost coins. Um, this widow doesn't have any shame. She loses in her house. Instantly, if we heard somebody say, you lost your coins, or in my case, your keys, or your wallet, or your cell phone in your house, what we might think is, boy, you might be a mess you might be messy. You are a pig. You live in a pig style. What's wrong with you? Hey, can't you keep track of anything? We may instantly judge. And she instead says, I found my lost coin. Now, back in Jesus' day, the wording they used was drachma for the coin. And a drachma would be about a day's wages. So figuring on about the Pennsylvania average income of $56,000 per person in Pennsylvania in a year, we looked at that and we drilled it down to a daily income. It gets to be about $215 with my weird math. Don't judge me, but it's about $215. If you and I lost $215 in our house, we'd probably start looking for it, wouldn't we? That's a cell phone cost for some of us. But for a widow who has no income, for a widow in that culture where there was no social security, there was no care for others, there is no hint that she has any sons to care for her. That's her whole retirement savings. That's all she's got. She's lost a tenth of it. We complain about the stock market going up and down. If this is like we're thinking about 1929 Great Depression sort of era for her where she's losing that much. It's almost all gone. This is not just losing a few quarters. So she searches high and low until she finds that coin. She finds it, she celebrates. Freedom. Doesn't care what the neighbors think, don't care, doesn't care what the friends think. Lives in the pig sty, she doesn't care. I found my lost coin. Come and celebrate with me. In the same way, there's such great rejoicing in heaven over one who is lost, that's found. One thing that is, my friends, is that God celebrated like that when you said yes to Jesus Christ freely celebrates. I don't know how it looks in heaven. Don't have a clue. The image I get in my head is car dealerships trying to sell cars. I think that just really minimizes what happens. The celebration that God has that one person chooses Jesus Christ. That you and I chose Jesus Christ. God's love for us. There's great excitement at a lost who's found. There's a great excitement when a lost is found. And yet sometimes, well, we can lose things on purpose or by accident, and people may try to run away and hide. Sometimes it's because they haven't heard anything. The example would be is, well, one Monday I went down to go watch with Tina Mason, my nephew who was four at the time, and Mia who was two. And Mason had his cell phone. But his cell phone was a broken over remote for, I think, a DVD player or something like that. I don't even think the DVD player worked anymore, but Mason would get on the phone, I guess, especially on Mondays, I didn't go down there, and he'd call me on his phone, really remote. 
hi, Brian, are you coming down today? And of course, the answer would be no. Norman Mason would say, Tina, what's Brian doing today? And Tina, covering for me, would say, I don't know. <laughs> Working, but one Monday where I did go down there, Mason at one point had his phone on me. He said, Uncle Brian, can you hold this for me? So I put the phone in my pocket. We received a phone call later that night. There's a frantic four-year-old in Mount Lebanon. Where's my cell phone? We're hearing crying and weeping over this little kid. Do you know where Mason put his phone? Guess what I found in my pocket? Cell phone was lost. Mason's first words of forgiveness and love were this. Don't trust Brian. <laughs> Next time I was down there, Mia looked at me and she said, Brian, hold this. Guess who took her toy home with him as well? <laughs> Anyhow, so what do we say here? There are times where things are just lost and they seem to be lost. <sighs> Maybe by choice. Some folks don't want to know Jesus Christ and some have not heard. Uh, when I was in Beaver Falls serving as a pastor, Easter Sunday morning, we walked out of church, myself, the organist, and another person walked out, and a kid rode up on a go-kart or go or some sort of little motor scooter bike thing. He rolled up there, and about eight to ten years of age, looked up at us and said, what are you guys doing in there? Well, we went to church, it's Easter. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That's the world we live in. That's ten years ago. I would suggest it's even gotten worse. There are some who just haven't heard. There are some who don't have a clue. And there are some that we don't even want to share with. I saw a Facebook meme, and there was this picture of a young man who had multiple piercings. But that's all that caught my eye. Piercings through his nose, his, his ears, and whatnot, maybe in his lip. But what caught my eye was the tattoos all over his face. It's as though somebody grabbed the newspaper and just shoved his face into the newsprint and it all came off, except they were tattoos, which mean permanent. And the caption underneath was, what would you say to this guy if he showed up on your doorstep looking for a date with your daughter? And some of the things printed down there were horrific. I thought about even trying to read some of them this morning and realized, well, one, I couldn't find that posting again because Facebook changes constantly. And two, I don't know if I want to read them. It's so easy when we see someone by their behavior or their looks that we just don't want to find. But that lost sheep was probably the outcast. And how many people do we know who others treat as though they're outsiders or the outcasts, the ugly ducklings, the folks that we don't want around us? By behavior, or what they say, how they look, how quickly do we judge? We hear nothing in Luke here about what that sheep looked like or the coin was worth. There's just celebrating. So who am I to judge? The kid's got tattoos all over his face. Or who am I to judge? With some of the folks I've talked to in this town who the cigarette smoke still gets to me when both of my parents have had cancer from smoking and Carol, my mother-in-law, is dying most likely from the cigarette she smoked for 40-some years where it's gotten to her lung cancer. What's more important? There's no indication at all that what's on the outside matters. Instead, it's about finding the lost, caring enough for those that we may think don't measure up. Because honestly, do we? I don't know about you, but I've been saved by. Grace. Good morning. Did I wake everybody up? You were some of you were napping, some of you were thinking, we can't wait to go to have lunch with a special gathering for the Cling Force. I just can't wait to get there. You totally tuned me out. I'm used to it. You go ahead and take a nap. But for those of you who are awake, or for you guys who are here today, this is the thing we go through once in a while here, which they just love so much. But maybe it sinks in. Because you and I, we've been saved by. Grace. Being saved, it's a. Yes. It's not a. Yes. What's that mean for you and me? I'm on my way to heaven. Jesus did the work. What's that mean for every other person we run into, even folks we may want to make fun of? What do we say? Hmm. They're saved by grace. It's about what Jesus did, not what they did or didn't do. 
But there are folks that you're going to run into that you don't think you have the words to say. You're going to think that you can't measure up. You're going to think, what in the world would I ever do with them? And what did we talk about last week? From 2 Corinthians chapter 10. What did we say? Jesus' words were 2 Corinthians 12. Pardon me. Jesus' words were these. To the Apostle Paul. And I just totally blanked on it. Anybody remember it all? Verse 9. My power, here we go, got it. It came back into my head. You ready? My power is made perfect in weakness. You guys paid attention to the front nine o'clock. It's so impressive. For those of you who are napping, they were only here this morning, and they remember. So if you took a nap on me there, here's what Jesus said to the Apostle Paul, who has more letters and more books in the Bible than anybody else. My power is made my power, Jesus said to Paul, was this. My power is made perfect in weakness. weakness. God's able to do more through us when we are weak. God's just looking for somebody he can use. Not for you to have all the answers. Or as Greg Lowry put and tells someone on page 14, God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the call. God wants to use you. You may not measure up. Good. You may not think you have all the answers. Great. You think I got all the answers? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, as I mentioned that, you know, from 2 Corinthians, was that 12 or 10 last week? And the first was, yeah, weak. God can do more through us when we don't have it all together. Because it's about God's power, not ours. So, if you're willing to share with somebody who doesn't know Jesus, if you're willing to care for someone who doesn't know Jesus, here's your assignment for this week if you choose to accept it. Identify someone in your life who is lost. For some of us, we've got a list that we've got going. For some of us, you can't think of anyone. <laughs> go to Sheets. Just go to Sheets. I sat there one day for two hours. It is incredible what I saw. Identify someone in your life who is lost. Pray for them daily by name. Now, of course, it might be cashier Lola at Sheets. Whatever. Yeah, pray for them by name. And then, I'd say read chapters 2 and 3 and tell someone. It's an easy, well worth it read. But friends, there's great rejoicing in heaven over the lost. Specifically when the lost have been found. And rejoicing that God rejoiced over you and I whenever we said yes to Jesus Christ. For some of us, we just need to hear that today. That God loved you so much that when you said yes to Jesus, he threw a party because you said yes. That's it. That's love. For some of us, well, we've been sitting around for a while and we've never really shared our faith. Well, God's saying, do something. I want to use you. So begin praying for someone else. Because there's incredible celebrating in heaven whenever the lost is found. If you're thinking, I can't do it on my own, <laughs> you're right. That's what we read from Romans chapter 1. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Lydia, this morning in the first service, I don't know if I heard in the second service, but she mentioned that there's power. And when you said it this morning, it jumped out at me that there's power. You and I get to think that we've got to do it ourselves going to work, and if it's going to last, it ain't us. When God gets to work, and uses us as weak as we may be, there's great celebrating. There's rejoicing in heaven. Rejoicing over the lost. My friends, I encourage you to pray with me if you would. You can find the prayer on the screen behind me. I'm encouraging you, though, to close your eyes, turn your hands up toward heaven as we talk with God and we pray. Let us pray. Lord God, loving Father, Lord God, I love you. I love you. I was lost and am now found. I have value because of you, Lord. Show me the lost around me. Give me the words to share. Give me the courage to share. Give me the ear to share. Give me the opportunity to share. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Friends, let's continue to worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. So my friends, let's continue to sing as we worship together, leaning on the everlasting arms. If you like 133 in the hymnal. Don't you two do it with open flame. But you know, you've got you're going like this. 
The awesome thing is here, especially, you know, not to point out, but Ben, you're banging into your dad there. It's good stuff. It really is. Because for some of us, we, you know, we sit here, we come to church, maybe we sit in a pew by ourselves. It can feel a little alone. But look around the room. You are not on your own. Thanks be to God for those things we can see. And the one who rejoices in heaven, those who are unseen. As you leave here today, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face shine up. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and filling you with that kind of power for those who are unashamed of the gospel. May God give you peace. Amen and amen. Thank <laughs> you.